Great. Good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so we, we've got a bit of a, an interesting season this year, and one of the talks that we looked at was, what can you do pre-harvest if you're in a bit of a crisis? And there are two, there are two products out there that can help when it comes to pre-harvest planning. And the, the title of my talk is Commercial Applications of Harvest in South Africa. Does that not work? Sorry. Okay, so I'm briefly this, this morning going to just look at the mode of action of um, the products. Looking at can one determine harvest efficacy? What effect does harvest, uh, harvester have on harvest maturity? What, when is the best time to apply harvester? What are the benefits? And are there any concerns with applying harvester? Um, the question, will the fruit be of a similar quality to fruit harvested seven to ten days later? And um, will harvester fruit make the export grade? So that's what I'm going to try and cover in the next 15 minutes. So in terms of um, harvester, what is it? So it's really a smart, fresh application in the tree. So it's applied, it vaporizes, and it fumigates around the fruit. It's a very quick and rapid acting um, molecule. And it can be applied in two ways. It can either be applied as a plant management tool, a bit like retain, um, where it can be applied two to three weeks before harvest. Or if you've got a crisis, it can be an emergency action treatment. And that could be because of rain or fruit drop or crop load that you can't get to the orchard. Or even if you've got labor issues and you haven't got people to, to harvest the fruit. So it's a very versatile tool. The mode of action, while well, both of these um, chemicals block or inhibit ethylene production. Okay, so how do they differ? So retain or AVG inhibits the, en the enzyme ACC synthase, and I'll show you that now. Uh, whereas harvester, like 1-NTP or SmartFresh, acts on the receptor site. So it, it acts in a different place. So if you look at the mode of action of, of retain, and Corin will probably go over this a bit more, but you're going from methione um, to ethylene through a number of different um, steps, but what the AVG or the retain does, it prevents the production of ACC synthase, which is needed for the final step um, to produce the ethylene. So it, it's, it's in the synthesis of the ethylene as opposed to the action of ethylene on the, on the fruit. So whereas Harvista is working on the receptor sites where it, 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 it attaches to the receptor, locks that receptor down, and until new receptor sites are, are, are produced, it prevents the fruits um, being receptive to ethylene. Okay, so anyone who knows anything about working with 1MCP, it's really all about ethylene management to get the best out of the product. Okay, if we look then at efficacy, um, if we just look at this graph, so what we did, we took a whole lot of orchards and we compared the... Um, after, after a shelf life, the amount of ethylene being produced by the treated versus the non-treated fruit. And if they're on the line, then there's no difference. Okay, so if you've got 100 parts per million of ethylene coming out of the harvester fruit and the same out of the control, you've got no difference. If you look at pears, then you can see they're all clustered um, on the bottom that it's, it's inhibiting um, the fruit. You might have the, the odd outlier, and that's obviously a fruit that maybe didn't uh, get sprayed properly. But if you look at um, a bate, you can see there, you don't get a huge amount of ethylene produced um, during the efficacy test, where something like Packham's, the moment it starts ripening, you get a huge amount. But what's more important is that there's very little movement on this y-axis, which is the amount of ethylene produced by um, following harvester application. So it's inhibiting the ethylene production. And likewise with apples, you can see that each one of those dots represents an orchard. Um, but what's interesting with the apples, doesn't matter what cultivators, they all ended up very similar position on the, on the model there. Okay, so we can see then that even if you apply it in the tree, you can use the same kind of um, testing to see if you had an effective treatment as um, with SmartFresh. So how does Harvista affect harvest maturity? Does it slow down starch breakdown? If you look at this graph, and these are from... Some, some work you did. I think one of the biggest things that, that Harvester does is it starts inhibiting starch breakdown. So um, that's one of the measurables that you can see if you are 
uh, monitoring or tracking an orchard. Likewise, with firmness, you'll see that there is a, a, a whole back of firmness. But unfortunately, well, sometimes if, you're, if your fruit aren't, aren't moving, then you're not going to see that difference. Um, and then you'll start picking up the difference in other areas, such as maybe color and such as um, your starch. So what about chlorophyll degradation and red blush development? I'll address these two now. But if we look at, um, at the firmness, so, so really the question is, if you spray harvester and then you um, say a week before or two weeks before, what you want to know is at the time of your commercial harvest, um, if you're now going to harvest 10 or 7 or 10 days later, are you going to get a similar apple had you not treated the fruit and, and harvested at the, at the release or at the, um, at the time of your commercial harvest. So if you look at this, you'll see that this, is, this represents about 10 days, and you can see that there was definitely in the firmness that the firmness after 10 days was very similar to the firmness for, and this was the commercial pick. So, so yes, you can see that difference um, in many instances. Uh, likewise, um, with, with skin color, if you apply it at the right time, you are going to get a greener fruit. Um, it's not always that obvious, but um, in this particular example, I don't know if you can see it in the, in the, um, in the slide here, but th these were just goldens that were left on the tree, I think it was about four weeks after the commercial harvest. We just went back to clean up the orchard, and, and you could see quite a big color difference. So, you know, if, it, if it, um, it's going to show an effect, then you get a good effect. So when is the best time to apply? So, so what we did is we, we took right from o over a 12-week, or I think it was a 12-week yeah, um, period, every week we, took, we, we sprayed with harvester and we took samples. Uh, we took samples for efficacy, and here you can see that there is a, a difference between the, um, the, the treated, which is the, the black, and the um, the red is the, the harvester, but basically what happens is that your ripening is held back during a, an efficacy test. So not only are you seeing a reduction in your, uh, in your ethylene, you're also seeing that, um, that you're getting that reduction. You also notice that over that 12 weeks, there was always a positive response. So there wasn't a bad time to apply the harvester. There was always an effect. Um, and as the fruit had a greater potential to ripen um, over over there, um, you're going to get, you're going to see that difference more because they're going to, they're going to ripen quicker during the shelf life. How about after, after storage? So if you harvest these about a week later and then you keep them, um, in this case it was for 12 weeks, again, um, after the shelf life, you would see this kind of delta difference between the um, treated and the untreated, the harvester and the controls. So although there was um, an effect on post-storage, and it was never as good as smart fresh, but it certainly resulted in a fruit that had a, a much better potential to, um, to re respond to the smart fresh because the ethylene had already been um, slightly inhibited. When is the best time to apply Harvista? Now, the recommendation at this stage is you want to get it quite early on before that train runs away. So, so they start, you know, if you start tracking your fruit at least four weeks before your expected harvest release, when they get between five and 10%, you know, that's kind of the, the time when is, is a good time to apply. Um, some cultivars like Pink Lady, it, you, could, you could take that a bit further. So, you know, that is for the long-term planning. But however, as I said, you know, if you are going to um, try and if you've got a, a crisis, you can, you can apply the harvester. You can see your fruit are already starting to drop in an orchard. You can apply the harvester and it starts putting on brakes. Um, so what are the benefits? Okay, we know it can delay harvest. Uh, as a management tool, this could be very important. Um, because it's on the trees longer, you get a larger fruit size. Delayed fruit drop. In, in this, this slide, you can see there the, the fruit on the, on the floor. Um, on the harvested trees, it, it, it stayed on. It's, it's, that, I think, is one of the most, under, one of the most under, um, estimated effects of harvester, that it can certainly assist you in, in helping fruit drop. Okay, what about pack-out? Now, this isn't to do with 
harvester doing anything chemically or anything like that. It's just basically the longer you leave fruit on the tree, the bigger it's going to get. So, so this was a commercial um, pack out. So, so what we found, if you, if you harvest, and the, the normal harvest was the yellow line, you, you, get a, you get a peak at a smaller pack size. But leaving the fruit on the tree for an extra seven to, to 10 days, you start getting a, a, a shift in that, and you get a bigger um, fruit, so you get few, fewer fruit in a carton, you can and obviously get more carton. So um, economically, it can make sense. What about quality? I mean, it, everything comes down to quality. If we look at, um, this is the delta difference. In other words, this is the difference between treated and untreated fruit. And we looked at, an, uh, in this case, I've just got a few examples from Brookfield, Gala, Goldens, Crips, and some Packhams. But what you see there is there was always a, um, a, 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 a benefit at, at time of, um, of packing after seven days. You can see that you've got that benefit. But if you compare it to the Smart Fresh, the, you know, so, so here you've got a, a kilogram improvement in this trial. But you got, with the Smart Fresh, you've got 2.3 kilograms. So it's a no-brainer. You know, the Smart Fresh definitely um, assists. And that is lost in many cases if you leave it on the trees too long. Um, but you still get the benefit if you apply a 1 MCP as a post-harvest um, application. And that same trend was found regardless of, of cultivars. If you look at the pears, um, where you have a ripening issue with, with Smart Fresh in many cases or 1 MCP, what you find then is that with the harvester you get a bit of a compromise. And, and you know, I've always said that harvester could be a, um, a good um, option if you are worried about um, ripening on pears. Okay, so um, proof, so this is the Packhams then. When they, when they come out of storage, you very seldom see any difference, whether it's a 1MCP treatment or a harvester treatment. But during the shelf life, that's where you start seeing the difference. And here's with the controls. They ripened very low. The smart fresh were, were still quite high. And these were about uh, between 4.5 and, and 5 kilograms. Not quite there yet, but certainly um, it does show you that there is a... Um, a post-storage benefit with pears that could maybe be um, yeah, looked at a bit closer. Skin color, I've already mentioned skin color. Uh, this you can see on the, on the trees. We, we had one instance where we had some fruit, I think it was a denobos. We, we left them on there, we forgot about them, we, and then uh, Agrofresh had some Italian visitors and they said, do you have anything to show us? And, and we said, well, there might be something at denobos. And we went to that orchard it was probably about four or five weeks after the orchard had been cleaned up. And then we found the, the control fruit were all on the floor, but the, the um, harvester fruit were, were still on the tree. And that, that for me, was one of the, the, the biggest eye-openers I've seen. Um, so if, and, and I think it all comes down to applying it at the correct time. Superficial scald if harvested within seven days. So if you do not have CA capacity, I've said, if you're in a crisis and you need to do something, apply harvester, don't, not, not as a, to extend your harvest time, but just to, to, as a scald um, a, a treatment. So you apply it, you've got a three day holding period, and then you harvest them. So if you're harvesting within seven days, we have seen a very good um, scald control. Not as good as smart fish, it never will be, because you're not gonna get the perfect treatment which you can get with, with one MCP in a, in a cold store. But um, there's certainly a benefit if you are in a situation where you don't know what to do with Granny Smith and you do not have CA stores. Greasiness, I'm just mentioning it. We have seen in instances that, um, and again, I think this just comes down to maturity, um, that, that it can, because your fruit are of a better quality, um, they, they are less greasy. So we have, we have seen a benefit there. So what are the challenges? Okay, well the obvious challenge is that you know the longer you leave fruit in the orchard, the higher the risk there of, of sunburn. Um, one NCP is going to do nothing for sunburn. You're going to have an increased risk of insect damage. Um, in the case of a, a fruit like um, Packhams, you don't want them to get too big. They can get knobbly, so you've got to watch that. Um, and, in, and if you don't apply it at the right time with certain um, red varieties, same as Retain. You know, you, you can um, inhibit blush color development. But if you apply it at the right time and you give your fruit enough 
time to develop that blush, um, then, you, then you can have a, a, a great benefit. Likewise, if you are doing it as a risk management tool right at, at harvest, at that point, your fruit are normally already fully blushed and ready to, to go. Okay, so apply at the correct time. And now this one is saying, okay, so you must either have enough time for blush to develop or must be applied when fruit is sufficiently blushed. And I think my last slide then, will it make the export grade? And the answer is, um, and this was just a pack out trial we did. And if you look at that slide, what it's showing is that um, regardless of when it was harvested, seven to 14 days afterwards, it was very comparable in quality to fruit that were untreated but harvested um, that at commercial pick at about seven or 14 days beforehand. I think that was my last slide. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll just end with this slide then. So this was just the, um, a, a, a breakdown. So in, in the commercial packout, 95% of the, the commercial at the right time was, was in grade one and 4.5% in grade two. With the harvester, slightly less, 93, 5.5 uh, in grade two. But at that time, 100% um, of the, the controls after 14 days past the right time in this particular trial were in um, class two. Okay, thank you.